We have the whole hour. Um, typically what we aim for is sort of a 30 to 40 minute presentation or sharing and then discussion. Um, okay. Though that we can flex up and down if you'd rather have more discussion, you'd rather have more presentation, we have the hour. No, that's great, that's perfect. Uh, I, that's, what I, that's what I had in mind. Okay, if that's okay, I just need to get some water and because uh, I, I just got out of work. I haven't time to drink yet. I'm, I'm here oh. like one minute. No worries. Let's, well, we'll just hang out here. You want to drop a link to your um, podcast appearance? Oh, yeah, I can do that. Uh, well, so now both the JS Party episode that it was a part of and the Practical AI um, that I, I got spliced in. But for this audience, it's probably the Practical AI one is going to be more um, more relevant. So. Because it, it actually has a, a, another discussion on kind of AI and software devs from um, go time. It's got a few different things. So that one is here. Fun. Love the hot takes. <laughs> I know. Swix was, all, uh, Swix was a little uh, giving me a side eye on it, but <laughs> I feel like. Okay. If you're going to claim that you're replacing humans, you have a high bar to live up to. All right. And I, I don't so know that I'd call that... Practical AI a competitor for latent space. I think they're, they're uh, um, sort of adjacent. Uh, Practical AI did a lot more stuff not in the LLM space um, and has been around a lot longer. All right. Okay. We've Remy, got... back Remy. to you now. Thank you very much. Up. Up. Okay, do you see my screen okay? Looks good. Looks good, okay. I'm gonna try to get the chat. If, if there's something or somebody asking question, I have only one screen. Um, if there's somebody asking question, can you just uh, tell them to me? Yeah, I, I can hop in with questions as they come in. That's amazing. And I'm going to try to get my pen online. And so the, the idea today is I'm pretty new at this, gen, at the, at this new uh, Gen AI thing. And I thought, you know, you could just uh, actually switch, you know, if you were doing things with uh, like GPT-4, you know, and, and you wanted to do like some work with uh, open source uh, local models instead. You just need it like to, to change a parameter and it would actually work. And I have been pretty disappointed when I realized it was actually not the case. And something I, for, I took for granted was actually a function calling or structure ext extraction. And so, and, and so one of the things that I, that I try to do is to actually make function extraction work because I, I think it's actually very, very important to, if we want to be able to do some agentic stuff to get access to, uh, to, uh, to proper function, uh, function calling and, uh, and structured outputs. Okay, and just need to do this. So yeah, yeah. I jump. I was uh, I was busy at work, and I just okay. okay. By the way, a few people can't see your screen, but half of us can. So. Oh, that's interesting. Um, half of you can see my screen, and the rest. I think it might just be. It might be the other side of Discord. It might just be individual, but I guess try stopping and resharing. Otherwise, half can, half can. Yeah, that's what I just did. Is that uh, is that okay for everybody? It works for me. Uh, people in the comments are maybe having issues, but okay, it seems like it's working for some people now. Okay, and can you maybe see me drawing on my screen? 
Yes, drawing works. Yeah. All right. That's good. So be, I like the setup. <laughs> it's pretty improvised, but let's do this. Okay. So, my challenge is actually to build cool stuff with, uh, that looks like we are doing it with OpenAI, but with Quanti 7B models and that run on computer or laptop GPU. Because we actually, I think we do need, you know, agent at homes. Um, if you've uh, been following what uh, Andrew Eng was, uh, was saying earlier, and uh, I think it's a, it's a pretty nice summary of, uh, of what I think, is that agent enables us to go, to go further, okay? And there's some design patterns like reflection and tool use, which are already pretty robust. And some other with that are more emerging technologies like planning and multi-agent collaboration. But at the beginning of this, like the, the building blocks is actually, you know, to be able to get structured outputs. And from structured outputs, being able to be calling one function, and then, you know, being able to call one function from a set of X functions, it's a bit different. And using function to return a value to answer and make a plan and make a conversation. Because if we try to, um, Where is my if we actually try to do with uh, with a with a local LLM just you know to to have it output JSON, we we're gonna have a lot of problem. Like for example You know, if I uh, if I try something like this, like for example, clients from OpenAI, import OpenAI, and then I, I well, what I have running there is actually um, I don't know if you can read, but what I have running here is actually I have a, a, a quantized version of Mistral Instruct running on my laptop. Uh, it's a um, 8 gigabytes uh, V1 laptop, so it can fit this uh, quantized uh, model. And so if I try to actually get it to, to output some JSON, I'll put some JSON like that. For example, let me get prompt. Let's try this again. Okay, so we're on. And so let's try, you know, we have a basic prompt to accept an instruction and a start of reply. And let's say that I say, okay, my basic prompt is going to be um, Harry Potter is uh, 19 years old, outputs uh, some JSON that represents Harry Potter. And then at the start of the reply, I'm going to say like nothing. And then I'm going to look at what is outputs it. By my model. Okay. So, all right. It's getting there. And so we can, for example, extend the number of tokens. We can't finish because there's not enough tokens. 
one and that should be great. And so we see that, you know, it's kind of getting there, right there. But if we try like another, another, another alternative, like we could try maybe to say, hey, text button or didn't. We could say, all right. complex task like you have to respect the following schema, uh, the following uh, rule, just output 0 or 1 if you think the log is an anomaly. Here we could have uh, a log which is uh, like info uh, user hashtag undefined just subscribe for example. So what we what we would like to do is to be able to create a one shot or a zero shot classifier basically. And that zero shot classifier would be like a, a zero shot anomaly detection classifier. And what you can see there is that it's really, it's giving me like one, but it's actually correct, but it's not being, uh, it's not respecting the format. So if I say, um, that's why we'll output value JSON. And now it's giving me zero, but there's actually an anomaly. And basically what I'm getting at is that this is very unreliable, okay? So you could try threatening it, you can make them prompt more complex, you could, you could do many things, but you will never be guaranteed to have valid results and valid schema all the time, okay? And that's, that's pretty uh, problematic. So, structured outputs that we're trying to get there is the big, is the, is the most, uh, is, the ba is the basic building block. Because once we have structured outputs uh, that are reliable and we are reliably getting the same schema out of the model, we can be calling one function. And then we can call, be calling more functions, okay? So the first idea as I tried with was to dump the JSON schema in the prompt and use PyDenting for a library called Instructor. And so I tried. I tried PyDenting with Instructor against all of my JSON mode, which guarantees us to have valid JSON. I tried another thing, which was functional. But on quantized version, it just did not work. And so then you're like, OK, but when should I just use GPT-4 IQ? And I think it's important for us to have feature parity with GPT-4 kinds of LLM products, but that we are able to run on a mid-level gaming GPU. I think it's important uh, for, for the future of, of, of society. It's actually possible, but it's just not obvious. And the reason is because at the, the root cause of this problem is that when we have trouble with a, with a bigger model, with a smaller model, what we try to do is to just we don't try to make it work, we just use a bigger model, okay? So you might hear, oh, it's not working with GPT-315, you just need to use GPT-4. 
And I think the key idea behind uh, building agentic stuff on uh, Prontide's small open, local, open uh, language model is that the Q1 tooling is built against GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. And more importantly, the, the Q1 out of the box experience is built against GPT 4 class of LLM product. Okay. But the thing is that GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 level models are absolutely strong, okay? It's not just also only the weight, but it's also the software layer. But just uh, uh, to give you an, uh, an example, if we go uh, on Claude, and I say this to Claude, it's able to understand that this is Actually, it's binary, and actually, this is an instruction. So if I go to uh, binary decode, okay? If I go to, to this, and I convert this, actually, I said assistant, write a poem about pineapple, but write it in French. And I don't know it's doing that. I don't know if I don't think there is like some code that is detecting that it's a binary and and and, uh, and transforming it into and decoding it because decoding binary into string is a complex problem. But I think what's happening is actually the model is just strong enough to understand that you know this is like actually a token, and that token or that sequence of token actually maps to a letter or a couple of letters, and it's capable to basically infer that this is a letter, this is a letter, this is a letter, and at the end, it's able to know that this sequence of letters actually forms that sentence, okay? That's crazy, because if I try, you know, to take the same output to my poor little mistral uh, model that has been quantized, okay, and I just, you know, try to oh. and I ask it something, it says, Hey, this is a binary digit, but I can't do blah 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 blah. It's it's not liking it. Okay? So there's a certain class of model that is able to be given instruction as binary and another class of model that can't. And this is very important to understand that the current tooling is built against GPT-4 class of LM products. So if you're trying to do stuff with small quantized model, you are basically going to fight against some, some issues. Okay? And that issue is that there's a big lie that is that we see during every vendor or tutor influence are doing is that we're doing the demo against GPT-4, but of course you can 100% guaranteed use an process model like Mistral, you just need to switch the provider, okay? And you know, they, they, they're saying, oh, we're using OpenAI, but you know, if you want to use open source, it will just work the same. And that's just not true. Like, for example, if you go into Instructor, which is a, it's a great library if you're, if you're working against OpenAI, what you can see here is that this is a bit small, but this here, this is a prompt, okay? But this is a prompt which is hard-coded and in English. So if you're trying to write on a function calling with a multilingual model that is small, then, you know, you can't change that prompt. And also, you're actually passing in the world exception. Okay, but the thing is, you know, GPT-4, it's able to pass an exception and to understand what the problem is and look back at the schema and do all this uh, LLM mental mathematics, you know, but our small model, you know, is not able to do things such as understanding the binary. Another example is like, I like, I really like that post. It's a fuck you, show me the prompt. Sorry if I just saw. 
by uh, Amal Hussain, which was, which I think is really interesting to read at the, at the wall, but one, one thing that struck me out is that basically there's a there's a prompt there, there used to be a point that's changed now okay it has been fixed but which is a, a smart llm chain okay and this prompt actually is out coded too okay so it's an out coded prompt okay and you can see that in the prompt at that time there was a typo for example so you're dealing with an hard-coded prompt that's probably hasn't been like checked thoroughly or like you know very much you know they, they probably tried to make it work against GPT 3.5 or GPT 4, and then you know they they said oh it's working let's 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 roll with that, and it, as you can see there's a typo here, okay, and it's and the conclusion I think is quite uh, interesting it says um, furthermore the prompt has a spelling error. And it is also really focuses on the negative about identifying error, which makes me skeptical that this prompt has been optimized or tested. But the truth is, against GPT-4, that is our, our, our cloud level, that is just able to get binary uh, dumps and be able to figure out what that means, you know, this is actually totally okay. It's just not okay if your model is a bit more limited. Okay. And there's also an interesting thing that is also important to understand. It's, it's quite a recent paper, but 19 February, but they did some, some experience about, you know, the accuracy and doing the same, the same task, but with bigger and bigger context, with chain of thought and with just uh, no chain of thought, like zero shot. And you can see that GPT-4 is just literally killing it, okay? The, the bigger the context with chain of thought is still able to get a very good accuracy, but the other models like mix, mixed trial, which we're not even talking about 7B models, we're talking about like quite heavy weights and good model, you can see their accuracy is dropping, okay? So I, I'm really interested in doing this with uh, GPT-3, uh, with uh, Mistral 7B to see how it, it, it stacks against. But this is very important to understand that GPT-4 just is a very, very strong model, okay? And so when we have tooling that is built against those kind of model, the only thing that happens is that the, when you prove that you, use, that you can use GPT-4 in a proof of concept, the only thing you prove and establish is that your, peers, your proof of concept works with GPT-4. You don't get any proof that it's going to work with anything that is less capable than that. Okay? So the problem with small models is that they don't have the sheer capacity, the software layer that is added, uh, the prompt engineering. If you look at the cloud prompt or ChatGPT prompt, it's not just your plain basic prompt. It's, a, it's, it's much more refined. And they don't have the fine tuning or LHF that the big model have, okay? But small models are very capable, but they can't do everything at the same time, okay? And so the idea is that when we're doing a dealing with local models, we can do something API user can't, is that we have access to the logits, okay? And I, I will uh, share some links uh, later on that, uh, that basically talk about that idea. But the big idea is that we can do something before we are sampling the, the, the tokens. We can filter out the, the, the logits that would give way to an invalid uh, response. So if, for example, if you're trying to have a JSON schema or something like that. And there's a library that does that really well, which is outlines. And outlines is actually, in, 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 um, is actually integrated into VLLM, which is a, a server for open uh, 
for um, for large language models, and you can see that on top of the on top of the completion API, you can have access to extra parameters, and one of those extra parameters are the following. Okay, this is response format. Okay, so response format that you can give type JSON object. So that's one thing. That's where that's element number one. There's guided JSON, which is very very interesting. And then there's uh, guided regex. And then there's guided choice, which is basically a special case of uh, guided uh, regex. They're actually all our special case of guided regex, but. But choice is actually a very simple regex endeavor, okay? So let's have a look at this in code. Okay? So for example, let's say I have a basic prompt And my basic prompt is only output 0 or 1 to my questions. And then I just try to use it again. Typo here. Yeah. I'm an artificial intelligence and don't have the ability to output zero or one, blah, 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 blah. But then we can use those, uh, those extra parameters. So, for example, we can use guided choice. Okay. So, guided choice would be we need, we need to give it an extra body. And then say guided choice, uh, and then give it strings, a list of strings, so zero or one. And we're gonna also uh, put seeds, so we get some different results. we have to put a seed is because we're using VLLM for speed uh, and VLLM has some optimization like caching like KV caching and stuff like that which makes that you if you use the same prompt you may have the same results if you use uh, the same prompt like back to back uh, and so you can use a seed to try to get different results okay when you're running on the local mo on, on a small computer with a small GPU uh, VLM helps you get uh, batching if you want to do several prompts at the same time. It also helps you uh, get faster inference that you could have with something like Olama. I love Olama, but it's just slower than uh, what VLM can do. Okay, and so now we're seeing that it's not, it's not, it's always outputting something that is correct. Okay. There's a couple questions in the chat. Um, one, just sort of logistically, are you, do you have a, a notebook or set of links that you can share after this? Will it be available? 
А, що? Що, що, що? Um, okay, so it sounds like that that will be good. Um, the other question is that just came in is what does what does the untraced LLM call function do? So it's just it's just basically what it's, uh, what it's saying it's um uh, it's an untraced LLM LLM call. So um I'm, I'm I'm I have to implement my own uh, my own abstraction for work. Because we can't use long chain or uh, or lama index or something, so I'm just building my layer. But it's basically just uh, we're getting the client, and it's just client that completions that creates, and then you know we're giving the model, the prompt, and uh, this is basically just uh, an helper function uh, that is wrapping uh, the, the async OpenAI uh, client. If does that then solve the question? Sounds like yes, it does. Is there any other questions? Um, I think those were the main questions. I think it'll be particularly good if you can yeah share stuff out um afterwards because a number of people continue to have troubles with the stream uh sounds like there's something going on um, with discord that has caused problems so a subset of people weren't able to watch as well um so it would be really good if yeah if you have a set of yeah yeah sure i will uh, i will clean that up and send it sure for sure so the one thing we can do then is like from we can from use from by you know use Pydentic to give us like a base model. Uh, we use Pydentic here because I'm, I'm going to try to be more describing when I talk them because if somebody does not see the screen, but we use base model uh, from Pydentic because it allows us to define JSON um, schema in a way that is very efficient in terms of line of code. So for example, let's say that I want to have like a, a class which is a log uh, anomaly report, okay, that inherits from base model. And this uh, log anomaly report, it can uh, have like uh, an output which is uh, like a, it can have a prediction which is going to be uh equals which is going to be a string for example let's start with that and it's going to have uh, a reasoning behind the prediction okay and so we have a log anomaly report which can have a pre okay which can uh, which holds a prediction and a reasoning and then let's just start to you know uh, give it uh just, just check if it works And one of the good thing with those uh, with with those base model is that you know you can easily uh, get the JSON schema out of it. Okay, so the JSON schema, as you see, is uh, uh, if you are if you don't see the screen, it's just basically a very verbose description uh, in JSON about what the schema accepts. Okay, so think about you can think about it like a very verbose uh, type system. Okay. And with uh, Pydentic, you can also import like enumerations if you need to restrict the set of value that something can take. So for example, we can have a class uh, prediction enum, for example, which have, which can be, uh, for example, um, positive equals anomaly. Uh, and negative equals normal. And then, you know, uh, it should accept like, okay. And then I can normally say that now my log anomaly report, instead of having a prediction, which is always a string, it should now, now, now be an enumeration, okay? And I just need to refresh my memory on Python tick and enums uh, to do correctly.
Oh, that's for the wall. Oh yeah, my bad. It's actually not Pydenting which is bugging it's me. And the prediction should be like, for example, anomaly. And so if we can do log anomaly reports, model JSON schema, it's going to give us uh, a dictionary. And so what we can do then with the LLM is to be able to do, for example, guided JSON, OK? So now instead of that, I'm going to say an instruction which would be, say, if the log is an anomaly, User hashtag user just paid a dollar undefined uh, just undefined dollar for example and then I can say in the complex in the in the extra body that I want to be guided JSON. And, the, and, the, and when we're going to try passing something like the log anomaly report directly without forgetting. OK, so we're going to do And so now what you can see is that it's, it is going to be always outputting valid JSON. So if I give it, if I try to cast this back, to log anomaly reports uh, from um, this password. There's a, a question in the chat about how this compares to instructor as an approach. Very good question. Very good question. So what what uh, instructor does, okay, is instructor it asks for a JSON and provides a JSON schema. Okay. And then this goes to OpenAI. And OpenAI is going to return valid JSON, but valid schema. Okay. So then instructor, what it does is it validates the, uh, the response. And if it's incorrect, it's going to send back the validation error to OpenAI. Okay? And ask it to correct. Okay? So, if I take my, my pen, you can say, please uh, respect the schema. And then OpenAI say, sure. And it returns valid JSON. And then PyDontic, it looks at the JSON and says, hey, no, this is not correct. And as a follow-up, OK? it will say, please fix, OK? So it's basically like doing this on, like if I'm on, uh, on Cloud or on uh, ChatGPT. 
say please output a valid JSON for uh, Harry Potter. And let's assume that it just gave me back JSON, okay? And then you say uh, the schema you gave me is incorrect, is incorrect. Uh, age should be uh, a string, uh, a flow, uh, an int, okay? And then you do, you give it back with the, with the previous context to OpenAI, and now it's trying to fix its mistake, okay? And maybe you say, uh, great, but uh, spell, so here it's giving me valid JSON, but maybe spell is actually uh, a list, okay? And so this is what Python ticker, uh, this is what Unstructor does. It's back and forth with OpenAI, asking for valid, uh, valid JSON, and when the schema is not good, it asks again, please, uh, please fix, basically. And you see that ChatGPT is very good at that, you know, even in that dummy kind of interaction, it's, it's able to fix the, the schema, okay, making the list. What's, uh, what we do here, okay, with, uh, with outlines or with uh, LM format enforcer, is that we're actually hacking into uh, the, the model so that when we are, before we are uh, sampling the prediction, we are forcing the, 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 the tokens to be correct, okay? So for example, you may be familiar with like uh, temperature, okay, top K, uh, top P, which are hyperparameters, okay? And what those hyperparameters mean is that at the output of the neural network, you are getting out of it a big vector, and that vector, each, oh, am I still alive? Can you still hear me? Yep, you're good. I think my, uh, my computer is not liking what I'm doing with the, So I've lost my screen. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Yeah. All right. And the idea is that the output of the neural network is an array of probabilities. Okay. So it could be like zero, zero point one. 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.4, okay? And each of these probability is mapping to the probability of a token, okay? So maybe it's the probability of token A, the probability of token B, the probability of token C, and the probability of token D. Knowing that we, we have all the tokens, so if we have 30,000 uh, tokens in our vocabulary, this array is gonna be 30,000 uh, long. Okay, and what we do with outlines is saying token B, okay, will give us not valid JSON. And so what we do is that we are manually putting the probability of token B at zero, kind of. It's not exactly what, it is what happens in effect, but it's not exactly like that, okay? And then we are uh, redimensioning the, the, the probabilities because they need to sum to one, okay? And then we can do the sampling, okay? And the sampling is the part which takes like the top key and, and, and stuff like that, okay? So basically, in a nutshell, outlines uh, and, uh, and this technique and any other library implementing that techniques is actually working before sampling, okay? And so before the response is returned, okay? And more importantly, it's working at each token prediction, okay? Whereas so instructor- there's a, 
a question in the chat then. So does outline only work with open source models where you can have access to the logits? Exactly. Okay. Okay, got it. And then this one's that that's from the chat. This is for me. So conceptually it's applying a mask where it's saying anything that would not be valid JSON at this token, uh, or not allow valid JSON to continue, uh, probability becomes zero and then renormalize everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Implementation awesome. differs a bit, but conceptually this is correct. That's super cool. And what it gives us is this when we go back to the photo to the beginning, okay? Structured outputs. Now we have it on local models. Even you see where well, I'm working with a 7B Mistral uh, quantized in four bits, okay? So this is not the strongest of the lot. Good model, but definitely not GPT-4. Definitely not Mistral. Now we can do calling one function. What is left to find out is how can we do calling one function from a set of X functions? Because what gives us 100% success here is that we are forcing the schema here. And here, for example, we are also forcing, okay? Using a, fun a function to return, uh, to return is basically just calling one function with like basically structured outputs and then unpacking uh, those outputs into the function call. And because we can guarantee the schema, then it's gonna work, okay? And what left to be worked out is calling one function from a set of X functions, making a plan, and having uh, two agents uh, converse. I think I have just one last thing to show you. Okay, is, I have two last things to show you. The first thing is, because we are forcing the schema immediately, we are not giving the model time to think. What we can do is do it in two steps. Having a first step that asks the model, hey, please think about my question and think it like, a, uh, think deeply, take a breath, and then you can prime it and, and, and let it start with, sure, is my step-by-step -step reasoning. And then you can feed that back into a second prompt that says, hey, now it's time to give your final answer, and now you are actually forcing uh, the JSON schema, okay? And so this gives us a two-step generation that helps us have, uh, basically to give some, to get some accuracy uh, bump from the model by doing it in two steps instead of one. And the, another idea is, how do we do uh, something like, uh, to data, to for example, how can we root to, uh, to, 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 to two functions? Because if we have two functions that don't take the same arguments, we can't use the JSON forcing so to make sure that the schema is gonna be valid. And our model is not strong enough and is not good enough at, at high context length to be able to understand two or three or five JSON schema in the prompts. It's gonna be too much for it, okay? So what we can do, is try to implement like a router. And the router is gonna be uh, a classification, so we're gonna create a regex that is just gonna be allowing like two choices. The first choice is gonna be like mathematics and the second is gonna be like programming, okay? And so now the prompt is, hey, just tell us if it's a question about mathematics or a question about programming. And because we can force with a regex, okay? Then what we, what we are is we can have Okay, so if I ask it, what is a S3 bucket and what's a category, it's actually to be able to, un to un only answer programming and mathematics respectively, okay? Because S3 bucket is a programming concept and category, a mathematic concept, okay? And so then which, what we can have is basically this. Hope it's not gonna break. We can have this router. So the router, the possibilities are like func A, func B, okay? And this is the first prompt. And then it gives an output, like maybe it says uh, func A. And then we use that to dispatch to another prompt that is actually able to call func A because it is an expert 
in the function A, okay? And if it has been func B, we could have another prompt that would be an expert in calling B, okay? And what is important to understand is GPT-4, it can do all that in one shot. It doesn't need to, to do separate state. But here we can actually do a chain that will be or this chain or this chain. And this gives us access to the ability to uh, run several functions from a set of X functions by decomposing. And then what we need to figure out is how to actually do planning, which is a bit more difficult. I haven't figured out how to do it. And how to have two agents converse, like two prompts converse with each other so that we can have an agentic uh, expert to expert conversation. And so the conclusion is this. Um, small models are very capable, but they can't do everything at the same time, okay? But they can do one thing at a time. And all of this is without fine tuning and without uh, anything uh, more fancy like that. So this is just straight quantized Mistral 7B out of the box, no special stuff on it. Uh, and so this is basically the base level. You, you could go further than that. Okay, sorry I took uh, more time than I expected. Well, well, this, was, this was great. Uh, super interesting. I'm kind of bummed that a lot of people dropped out because the the Discord video piece, um, though it sounds yes. like Yikes was recording it, so if you're good with him sharing the recording, um, yeah. that might be a way for, for them to get access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry, I... Uh, no, no, no. Uh, this, I is, this was super cool. Um, Thank you so much. Um, we are close to the end of time, so I do want to open for five minutes. If anybody has a topic they are excited to take for next week, um, let me find the um, spreadsheet that we have. Um, but does anyone want to bring forward a topic for next week? We can also take it async, which is how we got this amazing talk. And Remy, this was really, uh, that was super interesting. Um, so yeah, really appreciate you jumping on that. Um, cool. Well, let's, let's maybe wrap um, and we can call async for topics for next week. And hopefully Discord will get its act together. Um, if not, we will need to, to look at other options. And I've opened that conversation a little bit in the uh, moderator chat as well if we want to look at other video options. Um, but with that, uh, let's just wrap up. Uh, people will be excited if you can share the notebooks and, and some of the links um, later. Uh, we can do that in the yeah, action gonna, Discord. No, no. And it sounds like um, Yikes can share the video in there as well, uh, which is super cool. Um, that's it. Thank you all for, for coming to another week of AI in Action. Um, I had a blast, it looks like, from the chat. Um, you all had a good time. So we'll see you next week. <laughs>